Hey everyone, I'm Peter with 27 Plumbing. Today, I'm just gonna show you really quick how to do a complete pressure test on your home. Knowing how to perform a water pressure test on your home is a very important thing for every homeowner to know, especially if you're diagnosing the source of a faulty plumbing product in your house. Many fixtures and appliances are only rated for 80 PSI, or pounds per square inch gauge. Anything above 80 pounds of pressure can cause toilets to run, faucets to drip, it will increase your repair cost, and in some cases can even cause property damage. There are two different pressure tests to perform to get a complete picture. Both are very simple and only require a pressure gauge such as the one shown here. I'll put a link in the description where you can purchase this exact gauge. The gauge that I'm using will thread directly onto a water spigot, or if you're comfortable doing so, you can also get a reading on the drain valve of your water heater. If using a water spigot to get the reading, Keep in mind that it's not uncommon for a front spigot, or at least the spigot closest to the front of the home, to be plumbed on the high pressure side of the system. Installers will sometimes do this so that you'll have higher water pressure to wash a vehicle. You don't want to get a home pressure reading on the high water pressure side of the system as this will give you a false number. If you're unsure which spigot may be on the high pressure side of your system, or if you even have one on the high pressure side of the system, you can also do a quick test on both spigots. Whichever one is lower is going to be your low pressure side and that's where you should perform the following test. To begin, simply thread the gauge onto the spigot and then slowly turn the spigot on. I'll go ahead and zoom in so you can see what happens. So you saw that when I turned water on, the black needle quickly rose up. It appears as if it's on 90 looking from the camera. That's because of the angle this is at. We're actually set at about 80 pounds of pressure over here. 80 pounds is fine. It's the maximum we want. We don't want anything over that, but 80 in itself is okay. Now with the water turned on, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is go to a cold water faucet in your home and turn it on for about five seconds and then close it back off and come take another look at the gauge. This is going to reset any fluctuations in pressure you may have had and essentially give you a nice control. It's also going to show you what your home's static water pressure is. In this case, I've already performed this test. I know that we are at 80 pounds of pressure, static water here in my home. The static water pressure test is perhaps the more important between the two tests. Many municipalities are going to deliver water pressure to your home at much greater ratings than 80 PSI. So within your home, or sometimes just outside of your house, you likely have what we call a pressure reducing valve, or a PRV for short. This valve does exactly what its name implies. It takes that higher city pressure and is going to tone it down to safe operating pressure through the home. Again, nothing more than 80 pounds of pressure. Right now, with a static pressure test showing 80 pounds, we know that our pressure reducing valve is doing its job. This is a great start, but we should not stop here. There is still one further test to be done. If you have a tank style water heater, there is a good chance that your home is on what we call a closed loop system. Basically, what this means is that water that is within the system is unable to escape backwards into the city side. Now the reason this is important is because when the water heater is heating up, as a tank style will do constantly throughout the day and evening, the molecules of the water, as they heat, they're going to expand, and this is going to create additional pressure within the system. For this reason, your home is likely equipped with a thermal expansion device. This is often a thermal expansion tank, though it can sometimes be a thermal relief valve. We won't get too involved in the science behind the thermal expansion tank. I already have a video showing that, and you can feel free to check it out if you would like to learn more about it. What you should know is that the thermal expansion tank, or thermal relief valve, is going to guard against pressure building up within the home. As part of our water pressure test, we want to make sure that that device is doing its job. What we want to do next is open up the hot water faucet somewhere throughout the home. If you have a gas style heater, while you have that faucet running, you can listen to see when it fires up. If you have an electric water heater, it's gonna be a little bit more challenging to determine when that water heater kicks on. So for that reason, I would leave that faucet open for five, even 10 minutes if you're unsure. Plenty of time to know that that tank has realized that water, pressure, water temperature within is dropping and then it needs to fire back on. At this point, go ahead and turn off the hot water faucet and come back, take a look at the gauge, and you're gonna wanna watch it for a few minutes. You wanna watch and see if that black needle starts to slowly rise up. If your thermal relief device is operating properly, you should see minimal to no movement on that black needle. 
However, if it is faulty, if it's no longer doing its job and they will fail over time, that needle can go from 50, 60, 80, 150 pounds of pressure. It will rise quite drastically. It will sometimes take about 10 to 15 minutes to do so though, so you want to make sure you're there watching and waiting to see whether it's going to increase. If you don't have any increase in pressure and you're at or below 80 pounds, then you have nothing to worry about at the moment. Your home is in good shape pressure wise. If this is merely a routine inspection to make sure everything's in good shape, you're good to go. Nothing further is needed. If you are doing this test as part of a diagnosis process, you can rule out pressure as being your problem and go ahead and move on to the next steps. I hope this has been helpful. If you would like to watch our video showing how thermal expansion tanks operate in more depth, you can go ahead and check that out here. Thanks for watching. So many loud bugs.